Jackson, Director of Events at GovExec, here with Tim LaMaster, Vice President of Worldwide Systems Engineering at Lookout. Tim, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, George. Appreciate it. Looking forward to the conversation. Hey, me too. And thanks to Lookout for being a Marketplace Showcase Plus sponsor of this year's GovForward Multi-Cloud Series FedRAMP Policy and Marketplace Update event. Tim, why don't we start with just an explainer. Tell us who you are, the work you do, and maybe where FedRAMP fits in to the conversation. Sure. Yeah, happy to do that. So uh, as you introduced, uh, my name is Tim LaMaster. I've been at Lookout coming up on seven years, actually. So uh, a, a pretty good run and uh, enjoying the, my time here. Um, it's, it's been an interesting journey along the way. Um, starting out as an individual contributor SE, directly working with uh, customers and uh, prospects to understand what threats that they're encountering, help educate them on the threat landscape, and then uh, try to understand how we could uh, help them uh, defend and protect those mobile devices that we've all uh, come to rely on so, so much. Um, and then uh, just over the time, over, as we've built out our team, you know, I've grown the team and uh, now I've, I'm, I'm leading the team here uh, and, and still doing essentially the same thing. We've broadened our portfolio of uh, solutions available, but still really focused on helping customers understand the threat landscape, understand solutions that are available to address those threats. Um, and today we're going to be talking about FedRAMP. Uh, that's, that's actually a, a pretty important part of that uh, discussion as it relates to the customers. So jump into the FedRAMP aspect of this, Tim. Take us through a couple of the slides you have prepared here today. Sure. So what I thought I'd do today is really sort of talk through the journey that, that we've had um, in FedRAMP uh, here at Lookout. So uh, we started really in earnest, I would say, uh, the Fed, our FedRAMP journey in about 2017. There were some discussions a little before that, certainly talking about uh, how to do it, when to do it, uh, that sort of thing. But the, the real effort really began in, in 2017. And at that time, our, our, we were really focused on our mobile, what we call our mobile endpoint security product, uh, our mobile uh, protection product. And uh, so we, we started that process defining, trying to understand FedRAMP, trying to understand the requirements for it, trying to understand how our products would fit into that, what we needed to do to be compliant, all that sort of thing. Um, and we, we got, we got a, we, we had a compliance person internally focused on it, engineering focused on it, uh, myself and, you know, the federal team really focused on understanding the requirements side of that. And uh, we, we sort of went out to the market to get a sponsor. So as you may know, there are, there, as the audience will probably know, there are two primary methods to, to achieve a uh, Fed rent authorization. One is a, a cloud or a, a, a agency sponsorship. And the other one is a JAB, a joint authorization board. And so we started down initially the agency sponsorship path. So that essentially means that you go out and you find an agency that wants to use or is using your product and, and they sponsor you a, for a FedRAMP authorization for, through the FedRAMP process. And so we went out to our customers and our prospects and um, and had that discussion around, okay, you know, we, you and I agree that you guys need some solution like this. Um, would you be willing to sponsor us? And a lot of agencies were uh, willing conceptually to sponsor us, but we had a really hard time uh, sort of getting an agency to follow through, right? Because uh, they had to bring resources to bear. They had to assign uh, people to review our package and, and consult with us. And and it required a fair amount of work on their part. So we spent some time doing that and you know, didn't really make the progress that we were hoping in the timeline that we wanted. So we took a step back and um, we looked at you know, our existing marketplace in terms of where we were seeing demand. Uh, we knew that we had a solution that was, had strong demand in the market in the federal space. Um, we also knew that, as you can see here in this second sort of uh, timeline checkpoint, that it was aligning with the, the, the guidance coming out from uh, NIST and um, the CSF and, you know, other 
best practices around how do you secure the mobile uh, enterprise mobility. So with that, that combination of alignment with uh, best practices for security uh, and the demand from the customer base, we uh, decided in, uh, in 2018 that a JAB, a joint authorization board might be a better path for us. So in 20, 2018, uh, uh, we applied to the JAB. The JAB is a, a slightly different process as I mentioned. What's interesting about it is they only take essentially three uh, companies per quarter or 12 per year uh, and only accept those to the JAB. Um, so that, that meant that uh, we had to apply and the application process required that we list agencies that are asking for, uh, for our solution and that sort of thing. So we, we put together our package and submitted it. Uh, we had a pretty strong package we thought and, and, and it turned out to be the case that it was strong enough to be accepted. So we got accepted later that year in September into the JAB process. Um, and that's when the, the work really began uh, you know, in depth. Uh, um, to become FedRAMP authorized. So for the next year and a half or so, we spent uh, working with the, the JAB, uh, which is a, a joint authorization board of three agencies. It's the DOD, GSA, and uh, DHS. And uh, they jointly define the requirements and, um, and validate your solution and that sort of thing. So uh, we spent that time, we got our our provisional ATO, as they call it, when you go through the jab in April of 2020. Um, what was interesting about that is if you look back at it, um, at the time, we didn't fully appreciate this until we were near the end of it, uh, of that process, but we got a, a PATO from the jab as a public cloud offering, uh, which is pretty rare. There are not that many of those. Most people use a, a gov cloud approach when they're going through the jab. Um, so that was pretty rare, um, but we were able to make that happen. And then we got our first uh, agency ATO, ATO shortly after that from, from the VA and then have, have achieved other ones since then. So that's kind of the timeline that, uh, that we have followed for, for our, our journey here. Um, I often get asked a, a questions around uh, the business impact of FedRAMP. And while it is primarily focused on federal, um, it's, it's required, you know, for the most part by most U.S. government organizations. But one of the things we've found is it's, it's valuable or it has impact much broader than just federal. Um, and, and it makes sense if you think about it, if you step back a little bit and you think about it. One of the things that FedRAMP does is it sort of standardizes the cloud security validation. Every customer or every prospect that we speak with, when they consider a, a cloud solution, there are a number of security concerns or questions that they wanna have answered to assure themselves that your solution, your cloud solution is uh, implementing good security best practices. Uh, things like uh, patch management, auditing, access control, configuration management, all the sort of things you see you know, listed there. And then just, just common sense sort of best practice security. Um, and and FedRAP just standardizes that, it helps the agency or even a commercial company uh, look at that, that package or look at that uh, authorization and say, yes, this company understands and implements best practice security around their, their solution. So that was really helpful to our, our commercial industry as well. Uh, most large organizations, even uh, commercial organizations sort of adhere and recognize the, the cybersecurity framework that, uh, that NIST has introduced a couple years ago. Um, so it, it fits nicely into that. And um, one of the other things it did, honestly, kind of for us as, a, as an organization, for Lookout as organizations, um, it, it made us be much more disciplined about some of the practices that we were implementing. Uh, for example, around patching and auditing and access control. We had all those in place, um, but we had to be more disciplined about it. We had to be more timely, more structured, uh, more controls, more auditing, that sort of thing. So I think it, it really helped us essentially be more secure as a company. And um, so that's just a quick high level of some of the FedRAMP activity here at Lookout. So that's all the prepared material I had. It, you know, I'll turn it back to you, George, to see if you had any questions around our journey or anything else that you can think of. You know, I do have a few follow-up questions here, Tim. 
why did Lookout decide to pursue FedRAMP in the first place? You know, you gave a great timeline there from start to finish, but what did the ideation around that look like? Yeah, it, so it's interesting because, you know, if you think back to we started this, we started thinking about it in sort of the 2016 and really took action, like I said, in the 2017 timeframe. At that time, um, there was still a lot of hesitancy, cloud hesitancy, I would say, in, in federal. And what I mean by that is when we would have a conversation with a customer about how do they protect their mobile devices and the, the, the data on those mobile devices, a lot of them recognized that they needed a solution, but they wanted something on-prem. They wanted an on-prem solution and not a cloud-delivered solution. Um, so FedRAMP was sort of a, um, a way to overcome that hesitancy, right? To move beyond that barrier of uh, what's your, you have a, a SaaS solution, but what's your on-prem solution look like? And we didn't want to offer an on-prem solution. We thought that the future, so to speak, uh, was cloud delivered solutions and um, uh, for a number of reasons, which you know I can go into, but I won't spend a lot of time here on it. We just thought that was a, a, a much more efficient and uh, securely, security conscious approach. So, but to give the federal agencies confidence in that approach, we thought FedRAMP was, was really required and an easy way to help them understand it. You also mentioned the jab and kind of the limited number of candidates that make it through that approach. Yeah. So why did Lookout choose that path? It just strikes me as a higher bar. Yeah, it is, uh, it is, a, it is a higher bar. Uh, you know, I'll be honest and say that we didn't fully appreciate the jab uh, uniqueness or the, the unique challenges of going through a, a jab approach or taking the jab approach in the beginning. We saw it as a, um, a, a path or a, a solution to a problem we were encountering, which was getting a sponsor, uh, right? I mentioned that there were two paths, the agency sponsorship approach and the jab approach. And although we had several customers of our product already, you know, several customers uh, using the product, uh, finding an agency that could allocate resources to review our package and, and commit to, uh, taking us through that FedRAMP authorization journey, uh, we had a hard time doing that. And so we saw this jab as like, okay, well, let's take, let's just go this. And a little bit naive of us, but, uh, but we, that was kind of the approach. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we encountered or we discovered along the way was that um, it really raised the bar for, as I mentioned, you know, in, in one of the other uh, slides, it really raised the bar for us internally. Um, and it also um, became sort of a, a focus for our engineering team to try to uh, adhere to the JAB requirements. And, um, and ultimately when we finished the, and got our provisional ITO from the JAB, uh, what we found was it was very rare to, to have an organization go through a JAB authorization with their public cloud offering, meaning most organizations who try to go through the jab use a gov cloud approach and in fact last time i looked which is not that long ago maybe a month ago or so there were only six other uh sort of solutions that were jab authorized on a public cloud um so you know and, and if you think about those companies those are those are companies that have uh you know billions of dollars in revenue thousands of employees and you know a much larger compliance budget than lookout had so we felt like we were in really rare company having achieved what we did, but it made us a more secure platform as well. And we, we felt that um, all of our customers deserve that, you know, that uh, um, uh, confidence, I guess, you know, in our platform, not just our federal customers. Sure. Tim, you also mentioned the GovCloud approach, and I'm curious why not that route as well? You know, we talked about why you went jab, why not GovCloud? Yeah, that's, yeah. And I sort of touched on that in the previous answer, but let me elaborate by saying, you know, I think it was after, we, as we, by the time we started going through and uh, by the time we got accepted the jab and began to understand what was required there, um, we also began to recognize the value internally that it would make us a, a more secure platform that, um, 
that it would raise the bar for you know, all of our services, not just our government offering. And so all of our customers would benefit from this. And so we looked at our existing infrastructure and said there, we didn't think that we needed to separate out um, our government, uh, you know, draw a line essentially around our government services and say only these um, should be FedRAMP authorized. We just said, look, it should include all of our offering. And so we just felt like it was a better um, uh, so, uh, ultimate outcome for our, all of our customers. That's kind of the reason we did it ultimately. Yeah, you know, the business outcomes that you talked about earlier around things like patching or auditing, um, it seems like this process also helped build a strong foundation for Lookout generally. You know, you've been with the team, as you mentioned, during the beginnings, and now you have sort of a team of professionals around you. Has it made your life easier having gone through this from start to finish? Uh, it certainly made us smarter uh, and <laughs> more educated <laughs> uh, on the process. Uh, you know, easier in some ways, yes, right? Um, and what I mean by that is one of the things that we, and I touched on this in, in my slides, but one of the things we found was that uh, commercial companies cared about this as well. It wasn't, though we were doing it primarily or for our federal business, um, uh, commercial companies, especially those in the, uh, what I would call the highly regulated industries, you know, healthcare and financial services and things like that, um, they cared about it. FedRAMP was, even though it wasn't their requirement, they were aware of it, understood it, and it had uh, value to them. So um, it, it, also, it also aligned or had a lot of overlap, in fact, with some of the other compliance requirements uh, or compliance cert certification kind of uh, processes that we were going through for our commercial business, things like SOC 2 and ISO 27001, things like that. So it had relevance uh, there as well. So one of the conversations that I've had, Tim, in this larger program was with two professionals that are part of State Ramp. And we focused, I think, a lot of our conversation so far at the federal level, but I'd like to talk a little bit about State here because they modeled that nonprofit largely after FedRAMP. And one of the lessons, or at least early lessons of FedRAMP was kind of finding that balance between speed and what is necessary in any sort of cybersecurity venture, which is, you know, rigor. You don't want just anybody to kind of get in there and have access to, you know, really important data. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, advice you might have for other companies considering this FedRAMP journey and where speed versus rigor comes into the equation. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, so we went in to this process a little naive, like I mentioned, you know, not having done it before uh, at, my, at my level, individually anyway. Um, we, we, had, uh, we had a team inside the company you know, with, uh, with Kimberly and, and our compliance officer and, and John Scott, our engineering you know, VP that uh, were committed to this. And I think that was probably the most important part of, of our, our, our journey was being committed to it. Uh, not just sort of uh, thinking about it or giving a lip service or whatever, but being committed to the effort, to the process. Um, and, and recognizing that we may have to make some changes along the way, that was important because especially as we went through the jab, we found that there were some changes that we had to make to our infrastructure to align with some of the jab requirements in, in particular. Um, and so I, as, you, as I think about that from a, you know, from a state ramp perspective, um, you know, the, the idea or the, the, the question you asked around uh, speed versus, you know, security and uh, uh, rigor is, a, is an interesting question because we've put a lot of effort into uh, our FedRAMP authorization. Uh, it, it took, you know, multiple years of, of, of work in, inside the company. And um, it would be important at the state ramp level that that not be that we not have to duplicate that, that, you know, so they at the state ramp level should be able to take that work that's been done and the validation that we went through uh, from the FedRAMP 
PMO and uh, uh, grandfather that or you know, provide some reciprocity into the state ramp process, but at the same time, have their own, be nimble enough or have, have enough flexibility to take a, a company that hasn't gone through FedRAMP, for example, and bring them through the state ramp process from beginning to, to finish um, without having to engage with uh, the FedRAMP PMO and, and uh, sort of uh, you know, use that guidance as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the state ramp team does that. Uh, I think that it's certainly possible and I'm looking forward to, to actually uh, leveraging our, our, the work we've done to, uh, to get a state ramp uh, ATO as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like they're very open to engagement on that front with industry and listening uh, to folks just like yourself. Um, yeah. I have one more question here, Tim. You know, is Lookout done or what's next? What you've, what you've been through this, what's the next step? Yeah, you're, you're never really done with FedRAMP, <laughs> honestly. You know, it's like uh, I, have a, I have an old car that I'm restoring and, you know, people ask me, are you done restoring your car? You're never really done working on an old car and, and FedRAMP. It's not an old car, but it's a little bit like that in terms of it's, it's, a, it's a journey, right? You're always uh, uh, addressing uh, new security concerns. You're doing uh, continuous monitoring, what they call CONMON. So there's a CONMON process where you have to submit all your, your patching updates every month, um, your, your scans, your vulnerability scans. There's a continuous monitoring process that ensures that you know, uh, the, a FedRAMP ATO is not just a point in time. It's a continuous process of validating that you're keeping up and maintaining uh, that best practice implementation. So, so in addition to the common requirements and, and maintaining that, we're also, you know, we're, we as a company are growing as well. We've added new solutions to our, to our platform around um, cloud security and um, what, uh, what, what's called CASB, Cloud Access Security Broker Solutions. And so uh, as we've introduced and brought those in, onto our platform, we have to you know, bring those into our FedRAMP boundary and include them. So we, as we grow our platform, we have to uh, 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 include those into our offering and our SaaS offering and, and our FedRAMP uh, boundary. And um, so you no, know, we have a lot to do and I don't see it ending anytime soon. It's, it's a journey, like I said. Well, just a really great candid conversation. Tim, I got a lot out of it. And thanks so much for being here, giving us some of your time. No, thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thanks again, too, to look out for being a Marketplace Showcase Plus sponsor of this year's Gov Forward Multi-Cloud Series FedRAMP Policy and Marketplace Update event. To our audience, spend some more time in Lookout's resource hub here. Review their supportive materials. There's just a ton of great information in here. For GovExec, I'm George Jackson.